Gil Brazar is going to join us very soon. Uh, an ex uh, ex extremely talented man who has a a uh, fresh new revelation for us, some new information, I should say, that has that that he is going to share with us today. He's also we're going to ask him about that missing asteroid. Where did it go, Gil? Where did it go? Was it what did it even ever exist? And if it didn't, why? I mean, all NASA has to do is tell us, "Oops, we thought we saw something, but we didn't." But don't tell us you see an asteroid that's a half a mile wide. You give it a name, uh, 2016 WF9, and then you pull it from the charts and never speak of it again, just like Planet X. So we're going to ask Gil Brazard, what is the deal with asteroid 2016 WF9? Do do uh, go by the Earth February 25th, maybe, I guess. And then what about Planet 7X? Give us an update on it. Any new information? What's the story? And also, what about Revelation chapter 12, the wonder scene in heaven by John the Revelator? Can Gil give us some insight to this extraordinary constellation uh, event that is supposed to take place, for, I understand, in September of 2017. And what about Comet 45P Honda? Has he got any uh, information about that while we got in there? And oh, by the way, he wants to say, he said this to me on the phone, he said, I want to give you my take on the five waves of energy. So we're going to be asking Gil Brazard about that. And Gil, tell us, what is this new info you want to tell us uh, that's supposed to take place in March? Okay. So we're going to get all of that from Gil Brazard, Lord willing, in just a few minutes. Now, and when you go to Jerusalem, it's, it's, it is now on the lips of everyone. And it used to be when, when this third temple discussion was going on about 30 or 40 years ago, there were a lot of Jews saying, whoa, don't go there because, man, if we start talking Third Temple, you know, the Muslims and, and, and the surrounding uh, our, our nations are just going to come against us heavily. So let's not talk about it. Matter of fact, the lawmakers in the Knesset said, shh, let's not talk about this. We'll upset the world. Well, here we are now in the 50th year of the liberation of Jerusalem and the 69th year of the uh, establishment of Israel as a nation that there is not only a talk of a third temple but there's a temple institute in Jerusalem with the golden shoe bread table the golden altar the seven silver trumpets the high priest the breastplate everything according to scripture including the golden menorah that's sitting on Mount Zion staring at the temple mount there are priests I mean excuse me rabbis everywhere pushing for it, including Rabbi Yehuda Glick, who was almost murdered, shot four times by a Palestinian terrorist, only to survive miraculously, now sits in the Knesset and has just came to the inauguration of President Donald Trump representing the nation of Israel in the name of Jerusalem, by the way. So I don't think you can make this stuff up. I mean, we are living in the last days. And oh, by the way, while all these things are taking place, all these pieces are on the table of the coming of the Lord, the prophecies of the coming of the Lord, earthquakes, volcanoes, sinkholes, meteors, asteroids, uh, extreme weather conditions, apocalyptic, sometimes cataclysmic events taking place on the earth at an extraordinary rate as the birthing pains of the coming of Jesus Christ are magnificently being played out before our very eyes. And then throw in a few archaeological finds, like maybe they found the Urim and the Thurum, or Thummim, excuse me, Urim and Thummim. Or maybe, and they found a high priest button, and they have found the uh, 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 tablets with seven seals. Uh, they have found archaeological finds of the city of David and even the seed, olive seeds, inside a storage bin in the city of David, which is what Haggai asked the question, is there not seed in the barn? 
Haggai 2.19, which doesn't even make any sense when you read the chapter. It's like, why is that verse there? And so, anyway, there's so many things. I mean, are you serious? And even now, every time I go to Jerusalem, people ask me, would you keep an eye open for one of the two witnesses? And there's two witnesses in the Garden of Gethsemane right now. There's two olive trees. They're the only two trees in, Jeru in the nation of Israel that are over 2,000 years old. So they would have been in the Garden of Gethsemane as small twigs when Christ knelt on the rock of agony and prayed until a sweat became great drops of blood. Father, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Those two olive trees are there. They're big now, but they are two witnesses of that moment. And guess what? The Bible refers to the two witnesses that are coming in Revelation to the two olive trees. Oh, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, are you serious? There will be some physical manifestations. Here's what it says. And I also, upon the servants and handmaids in those days, will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heaven. Is that what Gilbert Zard is going to talk to us about today? And in the earth. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said and in the remnant to whom the Lord hath called. Folks, it is this, this, I'm telling you, the table is being set and you have to be, you have a front row seat to end time Bible prophecy. The current world events that are happening today and how they relate to biblical prophecy and planet 7X and all the other things that are taking place, these, uh, the way, his take on the waves of energy. His take on the Comet 45P. His take on is there an asteroid uh, um, 2016 WF9. And here he is, Gil Brazard. Hello, Paul. How's it going? Really good. You are live with us. Huge crowd of folks gathered. Great to have you on the show today, Gil. Well, I'm happy to be back. Great to have you. Wow. Everything's going on like you wouldn't believe, Gil. And, uh, you know, there's so much happening around the world with uh, different events. But today we're really interested. I mean, folks are really interested and very glad that you've come on to be with us. We appreciate you uh, returning. You are the expert, folks. Gil Brazard is the expert. I would say if it relates to... Uh, Planet 7X, as it relates to um, the research of biblical events and how they were tied to historical accounts, nobody has ever researched it and tied it together better than Gil Brazard and then, uh, and then verified it with, uh, I think, 12 or 13 different uh, scientists or mathematicians to verify this. So he has really done a great job. You can find his Facebook page. We're going to keep putting your website up there and your Facebook page, Gil, so people can find out uh, more about you. But Gil, let me ask you a couple questions. Let me ask you a couple. We've got about four or five questions, but one of them is this, just to get this off the table. There's circulating everywhere rumors of an asteroid that's supposed to come very close to the Earth February 25th. Now, the name of the asteroid, NASA named it in October. They said they called it Asteroid 2016 WF9. That was the name NASA gave it. NASA has now removed it from its charts. They said it was a half a mile wide. It's now listed nowhere. Do you know anything about this asteroid or, or what's going on with it? I'm afraid I don't. I haven't. Uh, that's the first, first I've heard of it, so uh, I can't really co make any comments on it because I don't have any info. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. 
Then what about Comet 45P, Honda? Any info you can share with us on that? Yeah, I've, uh, I've have it. I've turned it on on the uh, software program that it uh, it's it's built into the astronomy software now. Whenever they place it out, and it's uh, it's not a uh, it's definitely not our planet because it doesn't have the same orbit. It's not crossing uh, Earth path twice. Remember, uh, Revelation and other parts tells us that this object that's in the biblical records crossed our path twice with a gap of five months in between the entry and the exit point. Okay. And because all the other items uh, pivot from the center of the sun, so you have three fixed points. You have two where it crosses Earth's path and, uh, and one the uh, center of the sun. So it gives you three fixed, fixed points. That places it on the ecliptic only. It okay? Are we talking and, about? Are we talking planet seven X? Yes. Okay. Uh, so these other ones, uh, these these asteroids. Uh, uh, remember, their orbits are warped. Uh, we that's the reason why we see so many asteroids entering entering our. Uh, atmosphere and also uh, the reason why NASA is so worried because our uh, planet 7x is warping the orbits of, of comets we have scientific studies uh, going back almost oh seven to ten years from the UK as well as the US that it proves out that the orbits of our comets are warped by unknown gravity so and when you say the, when you say warped, uh, you're saying that the unknown gravity from is 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 knocking the asteroids off their orbit. Is that what you mean by warped? Uh, they it's kind of like uh, you're on a four lane driving, and you want to pass a vehicle. You you cross into the other lane to pass around, and then 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 you come back into your normal route, your normal your normal lane. Well, it's the same thing with these asteroids. Their gravity is warping and bending it, bending their normal path. Okay? Wow. And and so uh, and that's that can be uh, calculated and seen through uh, instruments missing space. And from two scientific reports we have and this is in the same area of space, Sagittarius, which is south of the universe. Okay. Remember, people, south of the universe is not polar south. That's called Nadar. South of the universe is where Sagittarius is. Okay. Uh, all, all of the data that we have, actually hard data, points to, uh, points to Sagittarius. So is, is Planet X coming from the direction of Sagittarius? That's its original course, right? Right now, if it was to reach us at, let's say, March of uh, this coming up, March, that means it's it's already on the inside of our solar system. It takes 76 days for it to cross, to enter our inner solar system and to exit. Uh, basically, that's on the inside of Earth's path uh -oh, it's around the sun. No one's seen it yet. Uh, you know, the 40-day mark, uh, which is very interesting. Also, uh, remember Jonah when he warned Nineveh, gave him a 40-day warning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I just I just received some information that uh, Trump uh, generals are sending uh, over 5,000 troops. Uh, into Iraq, and that they should be finished with ISIS in Iraq around February 4th, where they'll be announcing that they're free of uh, free of ISIS as far as uh, Iraq. Wow! And that, and that Nineveh 
you know, is free. Well, now, I mean, wait a minute. Mosul so you're saying enemy. you're saying we just got breaking news just now that Donald Trump is sending 5,000 U.S. troops into Iraq to eliminate ISIS and to try to have them completely wiped out of the Iraq, at least out of Iraq, not Syria, but Iraq, by February 4th. That's what uh, I got that over a, a week ago, and um, and it's in the paper that he sent five. I've heard over that that number. They're they're leaving uh, Kuwait. Uh, they drove across the country. And they're helping them, and they're um, they should be finished uh, fairly quick. And then after that, then they'll probably go into Syria. And, and finish up ISIS. All right. So we'll just keep that information and watch that close. I do know, personally, we know from our online church, I can just say we've had a lot of mothers contact us say, and, and ladies saying, pray for my sons and pray for my husbands. They've been sent to Kuwait. And uh, we've had some even say, pray for my son. He's been sent to Iraq. So we've been hearing that. We've been hearing it. I've never spoken a word about it publicly. But since you're bringing this up, I'll just say that that is one thing I know. I don't know anything about the 5,000 that, uh, that the president is sending. But, uh, but I know this. The president of the United States definitely has made no bones about it, that his plan is to annihilate and eradicate ISIS from the face of the earth. He said it in the inaugural address. So, I mean, we shouldn't be shocked when we hear of a plan going into effect. Right. Uh, no. What is interesting, keep in mind, Mosul is the old town of Nineveh. Right. Where, And uh, I'd already made the uh, claims that 40 days, if it is going to show up in March, which I don't have a crystal ball, I can't tell the future, I'm just saying for us to pay attention, like Watchmen of the Wall, we have a very interesting lineup that takes place March 15, 16, which lines up with what the biblical is saying on uh, uh, Revelation 12, 1. Counting backwards from that, the 40th day is February 4th. Wow! Okay. So, uh... Maybe there's some kind of parallel with the Bible there, if it occurs, that we have yet to find yet out to if see. it happens. So let's talk about your March. So this is the breaking news that you're sharing with us today is you're saying that it's very possible. Again, you don't have a crystal ball. You're not guaranteeing it. So when people, please, if it doesn't happen, he isn't guaranteeing it. But he's uh, Gil has studied enough to know that he's in the ballpark. He has studied how many times that we've had these major biblical and historical events. And I'm talking from the days of, of the sign that Jonah saw the sign, uh, you know, the preaching of Jonah, that in 40 days the Lord is going to destroy the city. And uh, this was this happened the same time that uh, the, the planet, that uh, it's believed that maybe the planet 7X went by. Also, Hezekiah's sundial going back 10 steps or 10 degrees. And these and there's other accounts. So based on this, Gil has come up with an eight-year window, to the unless, he, unless you've adjusted that. It was 2013 to 2021. So are you right. saying, Gil, that this March, what days are you thinking uh, Planet 7X is going to go by? Well, it's not exactly uh, thinking now. Uh, what I'm saying is when we look at the astronomy software, we have a lineup. Okay. Revelation 12, 1 uh, clearly tells us, okay, it says, the moon at the foot of the woman. All right? Okay. Well, if it says moon, where do we look? We look in the sky. All right? Okay. Okay. Uh, and and the woman is talking about is Virgo. Well, when we um, take a look at the software, we know that Elijah is supposed to come back around Passover or on Passover. That's usually either March or April, April even. Okay. 
Also, the biblical records tells us that sometimes it causes seasonal changes. All right. It causes either severe droughts or early uh, early winter or late late winter, something like that. It, our seasons end up being changed because of this. Extreme weather conditions changing almost like seasons. Are, uh, the other day, it was 64 degrees here in mid-January. It felt like mid-May. I mean, it literally looked like mid-May. It felt like mid-May. I'm thinking, wow, is there something going on here, you know? Right. Uh, today, uh, where I'm at, I'm uh, at 75 degrees over here, you know? So the uh, AC is coming on. Yeah. And it's middle <laughs> middle of winter. So right. uh, we, we definitely have uh, uh, changing parts of our weather and seasonal changes globally. So are you saying so, that this, this one, let's, and let me just read a little bit of it. It's Revelation 12. Uh, the Bible says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Are you saying that this wonder in heaven is about to happen in March of this year? Uh, what I am saying is that we have a lineup that we need to pay attention to. Okay. If it does happen, then we are awake. We're not asleep. Okay. Okay. So be a watchman and pay attention. See if there's any other clues that show up. Remember, the UN voted against Israel. That's biblical also. That was predicted over 2,000 years ago. Yes, it was. All right. So that happened just a few months ago. Uh, 2017 could be a very interesting year, starting again with this lineup. The word dragon in there was a common word used throughout time representing a comet. Okay? Okay. If you read closer, it says Virgo is the only constellation illuminated there. It, all right? Okay. The word, the word helios in Greek can mean multiple items. It can be a sun. It could be a comet. It could be a, a star. It could be... Anything that's illuminated. Okay, that's okay. That's what the word actually means. Okay, God. okay, I got it. So, you have, and she's pregnant. Well, the king planet was the same planet or star, if you wish, because it, from Earth it uh, appears as a star, uh, was the same star that showed up for the birth of uh, Mr. Yeshua. Well, March 15, 16, it's in the belly of Virgo. The star. It, yes, exactly, basically at her belly button where she would be pregnant. Ready to be delivered. Uh, right. And so uh, the Bible talks about also that daylight is made into night and night into day into daylight. Well, that's not an eclipse. Eclipse cannot bring you light into the night part of the uh, sky. That is a 12-hour delay it's talking about. For midnight to be noon and noon into midnight, that's a 12-hour delay. Just like the time of uh, Joshua's long day, he had 12 extra hours of daylight. Well, the opposite side of Earth at the time would have 12 extra hours of darkness. This is going to reoccur when this planet comes around. So now this 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 womb of 
the woman of uh, Virgo, there is going to be the star, there's a star, a bright illuminating star, you're saying around March 15th or 16th, that's going to pass into the womb. We're going to be actually, because a lot of folks were, were, were hearing September 23rd, 2017. Is that wrong? Are they, are they, are they talking about something else? It's my strong opinion. Yes, that is a misinterpretation of the way the Hebrews uh, use the sky. Okay. The 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 occult version, which is called the zodiac, is using the daytime skies. They use charts, and now today they use software because you can't see the stars during the day. And these people are turning off the sun. There's a there's a there's a setting you can turn off the sun in, in the software to where it looks like it's night, but it's the daytime sky. In September, you're looking at the daytime skies at uh, Virgo. In March, you're looking at the night. That's why they're six months apart. Okay. All right. Because one, you're looking from the daytime. The other one, you're looking from the nighttime at Virgo the constellation Virgo. The Mezara, which is what the Hebrew used throughout the scriptures, was the nighttime skies where anybody can see these signs. Remember where it says that uh, our Messiah returns mid of night? Not mid of day. Okay. Right? Right. Remember where the ten virgins are having At midnight. Lights? They're lit. At midnight. Right. It's not during noon, is it? No, it's midnight. This, right. And this is after a 12 hour delay and earth rotation. Okay, okay. So okay. so the September twenty third is a is a daytime uh constellational alignment and you're saying that's opposite of this March fifteenth or sixteenth, which is a nighttime constellation alignment which you believe uh and what the point you're making here is fits more the biblical narrative of the coming of the lord at midnight you're literally looking at it from the point of view of where the constellation alignment is taking place correct and i also calculate in there that there's a 12-hour delay okay this is viewed from jerusalem at mid of night so when you slow down the Earth's rotation by 12 hours, okay, and when you go, this is the point that I missed in 2016. Okay. When you when when we go back and look at Joshua's long day, it says the moon was delayed by 12 hours as well. Ah. I, so when we come back and we delay the moon by 12 hours on 15 six, it puts it exactly at her foot. Okay. As the text is stating. So now, you're saying the Revelation 12 wonder in heaven that a lot of folks think it's in September. You're saying, hold on a minute. In reality, it's really going to happen in March. And, if, and that there's also something coming into the womb. Uh, that's going to be illuminated, and you're saying it's a star. Do Do you know which what it is? I mean, I mean, have you identified it? Is it a comet? Is it no? It's, it's Jupiter. It's Jupiter. It's the king planet. The it's king, Jupiter. King okay. Planet moves into the belly of Virgo. Okay, and that she, that we know is going to happen. That is absolutely a fact, folks. It's going to happen. Yes, she okay. is giving birth to a king. I got but it. That's why it's the king, the, the uh, king planet. Okay. And, uh, and and read the text carefully. It says only Virgo is illuminated. You can't do that with the sun, but you can do it with a comet's tail because the tail points opposite of the sun, and the software model shows us that only Virgo is illuminated. Now, uh, keep in mind that Jupiter has an orbit of 11.8 years. All right. It would not come back into Virgo's belly to another 11.8 years. Now, how do we make that line up with the Hebrew counting method? All right, help me on they that. Have a, 
to have seven years, you know, every seventh year is a Sabbath year, and every fiftieth year is a jubilee. That's right. Well, he, well, this is the uh, this is when he picks up his bride, and the bride may brings them to a place of safety in the wilderness, where they prepare for a wedding and train. They have to be, you know, they have to learn a song before entering. They have to I know. learn. So that takes three and a half years by the in the wilderness, tra being being trained Train. and learning what they need to do for the wedding, which is three and a half years later. Remember, uh, Elijah and Moses show up at Passover alive again. We're going to see some real people. They are prophesizing for 1,260 days. Then they're dead. Then they raise from the dead. These, right. These that's when the second taking away happens. That's, but this one is to heaven. It says the dead are first, then the living. I hear you. That's exactly and, what it says, and, folks. And you can be anywhere in the world, and you're going to heaven. That's the second. But the first one is defined completely different. We read it carefully. You say the first taking away, it says a remnant. That's not everybody. You mm -hmm. have to be in Jerusalem because you're following a mekra. A mekra in Hebrew means dry rehearsal. You're required to be in Jerusalem. That's why this sign is mid of night from the point of view of Jerusalem. Remember, the Messiah comes mid of night. He shows up in, in Jerusalem. Absolutely. Where, where does Elijah show up three and a half days earlier than that? He shows up at Passover. Now, how did they know 2,000 years ago that this sign in heaven, which could land on any day as long as the stars are lining up, how did they know that this was exactly three and a half days after Passover? Because three and a half days prior to this is a full moon. Okay, how did they know this? So you're saying this, I, and, and I haven't looked to see, I just haven't looked. Uh, I don't have a, a, the count in front of me. Passover this year is what? It might be early. It might be early. Because that depends on the moon. We have to have two witnesses, and we have to have two priests uh, it, have to look up and say, yep, there it is, full moon. And, uh, so once but, that, am I right? Well, also with this, it, it takes, you have to have the right barley. The barley has to be, as called a... The a, barley. It has to be a, yeah, because you can't use the previous grain. You have to use that year grain because that's why you're thanking him for you thanking him for this the barley thing. harvest. The, right, exactly. So, so you're yeah, saying yeah. Passover? So we're trying to figure out Passover based on the barley harvest, based on the full moon, confirmed by two priests, and three and a half days later, then you have this event. It's in the heavens. This, this, uh, which is exactly the same amount of time that the two prophets lay dead. Remember, they prophesied. I mean, the word "profess" means to speak. Yes. They, they can't do. speak if they're dead. So they prophesied one thousand two hundred sixty days. Then they're dead for three and a half. Okay. So, which is three and a half days longer there, there on earth than the people who are in the wilderness for one thousand two hundred sixty days. So that actually tells you that they're, they're. They're at Passover, but the bride and bridemaid doesn't get taken to the wilderness to three and a half days later, which is on this day, March 15, 16, where this lineup happens. So the lineup that we're reading here, this this wonder in heaven that John the Revelator, a 94-year-old apostle, exiled on the Isle of Patmos off the coast of Greece, is getting this revelation from Jesus Christ. And he sees a wonder in heaven. This this event he sees of the star alignment is going to happen March 15th or 16th. Now, keep in mind, a wedding, because you have to feed your guests at a wedding, you cannot feed them on a Sabbath or a Jubilee because you're conserving food on those years. All right? Okay, okay. So it can only be the following March. Which March or April, you know, it would be the Passover, which would be when it would occur. Well, we're looking for some time in the future, let's say, the following March after Sabbath or Jubilee in the next 50 years. Does this line up again? 
we have no lineups that ever occur. This is the only one that occurs on a Passover right after uh, Jubilee. That's, you know? In other words, we're not going to get to see this uh, constellational lineup again. This is it? This is it. For at least, at least I checked the, the ne next 50 years. There is no lineup after the following March of a Sabbath or Jubilee. Now, remember where it says in the Bible, all will be fulfilled be before this generation dies out. That's all Israel form. They're already 84 years old. If you count in the Hebrew way of counting, they can't go another 50 years. They're all dead. This generation will have died uh, out. Here, yeah, I know, I know. And there's been, so, and, and just so that you'll know, Gil, I know you know, but so that the listeners out there will know, because the, uh, that there are a lot of different starting points that, that different theologians and, and Bible scholars of eschatology, when you start talking about the uh, fig tree generation, we call it, when does it start? Well, some people say, well, at the Balfour Declaration of 1917. Some say, no, no, no. It was when the, uh, the United Nations voted and made Israel a state, actually, on November 29th, 1947. Others say, no, 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 no. It was when Israel became a nation on May the 14th, 1948. Others say, no, 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 no. It's when, the, it's when Jerusalem was unified during the Six-Day War in 1967. So, and then you have the debate, is a generation 40 years? Is a generation 70 years? Is a generation 80 years? Or some would say, is a generation, the uh, man's allotted days that God told Moses, 120 years. So where do you start? Where does it end? That is still up for debate. But either way, no matter which, where you start or end, we're in this generational period somewhere. I mean, Gil, wouldn't you agree? Without a doubt. But I would just suggest people uh, view the Bible from a point of view that is Hebraic or oh, of Hebrew course. in its nature. Of because course. Because that's who the authors were. Of course. I agree with you a thousand percent. So that's why you're adamant about the Hebrew calendar and, and, and following also the constellations. And I also know you follow the current events that are related. For instance, you just brought up Donald Trump, the potential fact that he may go in and take Mosul back from ISIS, fully liberating it, which was the ancient city of Nineveh. I mean, that's huge, especially if it ties into your dates uh, prior to this uh, March 15, 16. So you're saying sometime around February 4. Well, unless we get the uh, re reason why the timing is not pulled out of uh, nowhere. We're using this mark in the sky. Right. And it says that we won't be asleep. That means if you're looking for it. Because he's trained you to look at the sky for the moon, for the calendar. He's given us a sign in Revelation He's trained us. That's what uh, McRaws are and everything. They're dry rehearsals, and he's telling us how to tell the calendar. He didn't, he didn't say look at the Gregorian calendar. No. It wasn't even there yet. No. He uses the skies. So he gets you used to looking at the skies for signs. Okay. On a, and since I cannot tell a future, I can only say it greatly concerns me. Pay attention to what's happening on the news and pay attention to what's happening in the skies. These decks uh, until March 15th. If we don't see anything, then then I don't see any other signs that would line up that would lock, match the biblical record. And um, unless this event that we're looking at, this wonder in the heavens, even though it would be be let's say happening, what 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 will take place be, uh, during that? unless we're missing something that needs to happen yet, and that this is just the wonder in heaven during this uh, fig tree generation. I mean, you have to know that, yeah. you know, you know you Remember, know, it's not going to line up. These stars won't line up like this again. That you know. Yeah, I think that there's a parallel to something that he said. He said for a wicked and adulterous generation, there'll be one sign, the sign of Jonah. 
Yeah. I think I think that we do have a world that's wicked and adulterous and and if this is a double in your window that because there's two signs for John. One was the whale. The other one was not. I think both the both the pages of Jonah are pertaining to the return of the Messiah. The first one was when he was going to be resurrected. Yep. And and the second one about the forty day is an indication was, was the warning to the wicked also that this is going to be coming next. Now if if we're right, then that means we're only going to have a short warning. Right. Well, you know, otherwise, it's, go ahead. otherwise telescopes would have given us advanced warning of 16 years from the edge of our solar system. And I'm talking about amateur astronomers been able to warn us 16 years ahead of time. Okay. So but because, we know it's close because the orbits of comets are warped, our seasons are changed, our magnetic our magnetic north is uh, moving at 12 times its normal rate. Uh, our, the, the tilt of the earth has another four degrees tilt to it because it wobbles. Yeah, okay? it does. It does. Yep. Uh, all of these changes are not done by cars. No. Warming up the atmosphere. It doesn't affect the sun. The no. sun is acting extremely strange. Right, you are uh, right. All the planets are warming up. Yes, you are we, right. We, and and the war and the orbits of normal asteroids are being warped, and now they're uh, crossing Earth's path, and that's why we're seeing more and more meteors entering our atmosphere because they are perturbed. They're they're being warped disturbed from the normal path. So okay, so you so you're saying, and you know what? This is fascinating, folks. Seriously, uh, because Gil is bringing forth everything that we're already hearing. We're hearing of the magnetosphere being moved, and Gil, I don't know if you've seen BP Earth Watch's video where it literally shows an incredible movement in the magnetosphere. We uh, also Dutch Sense who captured it also, and now there's even some international. Uh, organizations that have confirmed this and Mike from around the world also talks about the waves of energy so I want to ask you what is your take we'll come back to this March 5th write it down folks March 15th and 16th can we before I ask you about waves of energy can we can we be able to look up in the heavens and see this constellation of wonder in the heavens can we look up there and see it on March 15th or 16th Yes, at midnight. At it'll midnight. Be, it'll be right in the center of the sky looking south. Okay. Um, then then but, at midnight, which time? Uh, Jerusalem midnight? Where? Uh, well, remember, as it, if this planet approaches, we will, about three and a half days earlier than that. Uh, we'll see it? Earth, Earth, Earth is too close to the plasma. A tail. They'll have to turn off the generators globally. So Passover is going to be held with oil lamps and candles because there'll be no power at that that night. So the world is not going to be at uh, there will be no TV crews or radio crews announcing Elijah and Moses has arrived in Jerusalem. This is going to be a private meeting because there won't be power on the earth. They're going to, have to shut down the power button because Earth is too close to the plasma there, like a like an EMP wave. So you're so, saying there's going to be a global mass blackout, be, not because of mankind, but because of the plasma uh, tail will be just too close. It will affect us. Right for about three days, we'll have that. Wow! And oh, by the way, folks, we've had three days of darkness before. It was one of the plagues of Egypt. We've had this before. And, uh... Okay. Now, okay. Okay. All right, so... The, uh... <laughs> all right, now let me ask you a question. Let's, 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 let's hold that for a moment. Let's just put that right there. I want to welcome all of you that are here. This is Gil Brazard, uh, uh, an astronomer. Uh, he he uh, 
if you're watching at my website, my son keeps putting uh, his website up on the screen, his Facebook page. You, he also has a DVD out, folks. Uh, is that your website where that's available, uh, Gil? I think it's planetx.org or something. Net. Dot yeah. net. Okay. Planet X. Planet, planet, no, it's planet7x.net. Sorry, I'm sorry. Planet7x.net. You can go there, and he has a DVD. It's an excellent film they put together. You can, you, that's where you could uh, purchase that if you wanted to watch that from home. And, and get a, a whole, he's got all the charts and graphs, all this stuff is available. Check out his website, planet7x.net. Now, also, folks, uh, Gil um, is from Louisiana. He's from Louisiana. And he uh, really has dedicated uh, his life to trying to help understand the, uh, the signs in the heavens. And the Bible says that men's hearts would fail them, Gil, for fear, for looking after those things that are coming on the earth. So I want to ask you about the five waves of energy that Mike from around the world has introduced to us really about four to five years ago. Do you, what is your take on the five waves of energy? Well, I have a, a different take than what they, uh, I've read the articles where they said that, uh, and this is the energy that's finally reaching us, uh, hitting Earth. That's NASA. That's what NASA says. Yeah, I'm not, I'm You're not, not buying, buying that. Okay. Uh, okay. If it would be 50 million light years away, it would be a, it would be a, a, a lot bigger than uh, quadruple super, and it'd be like a thousand times greater. Uh, okay. You'd have a, a nice star in the sky, like some sort of nebula, that would be extremely huge. Uh, that, uh, which to me is, it's just it's impossible because uh, the uh, the light and the plasma would dissipate by the time it reached here. If uh, if we talk about a distance of 50 million light years away, and uh, I have something that's quite quite uh, a little bit more simpler and probably more practical upon it. If a person uses something that's called uh, Occam's razor, when you have two different opinions and one is simpler than the other, go go with the simpler. Well, uh, when, you're talking you, to, when you're talking to Pastor Paul Begley, please go simpler, okay? Because I <laughs> stay all simple, all right? <laughs> we have a model... Uh, we have the orbital path. Okay. We have uh, also a given date in Revelation 12. 1. Yes. Okay. The orbital path was given to us by the Asian astronomers, the Chinese, Korean, and Japanese, because they saw it for 26 months. They documented it. And each kingdom had at least 10 astronomers working for the royal house uh, houses. So that's at least. 30 Mr. astronomers that saw it for the Asians. Now that was China, Japan, and what's the other one? Korea. Korea, okay. And uh, and when when we plotted the information, I was the first to plot the information. Yes, you were. It gave us an orbit with an entry and exit of about roughly 150, 152 days separation. Okay. That gave us the five months, and this object was on Earth planetary plane it crosses earth path twice yes well so we have it's it's highway that it's passing on and driving on all right all right and it and it's a it's elliptical now uh we have a given date that revelation is talking about possibly uh march 15th so when we reverse the model from that point and we go back to the point that uh, NASA was talking about, that uh, that they saw a light in the sky. That was uh, December 27, 2004. What, what's interesting is Pluto was very close to our planet, and it was downstream of the tail. Well... If you remember when that little comet passed by, Mar uh, I think it was Mars, 
and it lit up Mars. I sent you some pictures of it. Yes, that. yes, I do. Okay, that was a plasma dis, uh, discharge. Well, and, and that was from a small little rock in the sky that did that to, to Mars. Now we're looking at a planet that's, oh, 14 times or so larger than Pluto. Uh, I think there was a discharge against Pluto of massive, massive proportions. Wow. And that flash uh, radiated towards the uh, uh, Earth. And what's interesting, the position of Earth in December where the moon, because it said it bounced off the moon, hitting our atmosphere, lighting us up at night. That's exactly what you see in the model. You have an exact uh, replication of what they're talking about. So do you know that when you just said that this event happened December 27, 2004, you do know that the day before that, December 26, 2004, is the mega earthquake of 9.1 or 9.2 in Indonesia that brought a tsunami that killed a quarter of a million people. Did this event bring that earthquake and tsunami? It's possible. I, I can't. I can't. I can't rule it out. But uh, that's in fact that's fascinating. It, you're going to have different waves of energy, different types of energy. Okay. So and it will affect the Earth in different different ways. Okay. Now some of this energy went further out into space. And because of the Voyager and the Pioneer probes, we know that space gets thicker after a certain area. So these waves, when it hits space, that thicker would have would have uh, focused back towards the sun. It's like hitting a uh, parabolic uh, mirror, kind of. It would have focused it back towards the sun because Earth is kind of like in a fish. It's uh, considered in a sphere, it, like a fish. Uh, fishbowl that we have these multi multiple thick layers of space well as these layers are hitting these thicker layers they're bouncing back and they're focused back to the Sun and that's what we're receiving right now these extra five energy waves are coming back at us from that uh, coming back to the focal uh, focal point so when Mike from around the world talks about the five waves of energy and I know you've you've heard that you've uh, and and he he says it is from Planet X. Now that took me four years to get him to confirm that, but he says yes, it is from Planet X. And he talks of Planet X as a binary system. Okay, uh, what uh, you know is he? Uh, are we still talking about the same thing, or it's just a different verbiage? Uh, what is your take yeah. on that? Uh. My information uh, disproves that this is linked to a binary because its orbital distance that it goes out only 360 years is not far enough to pick up to, to circle a secondary sun like a binary uh, star. So its, its orbit is entirely too short for that as far as the distance. Okay. Now, even if it was connected to a sun orbiting a sun and that uh, that the sun was coming in, all right? The given path given to us by the uh, Asian astronomers shows us that it's a, a simple elliptic path, just like just like an asteroid or a comet, all right? Okay. Otherwise, you'd have like a, a warped um, helical path or going around the sun, it would not be a uh, elliptical path. It can't. It wouldn't. So we have just a simple item here. It's a very large comet slash planet, if you want to call it that. Because okay. I think it would have to be a whole new category. Okay. And it, it roughly has a 360-year orbit that's very elliptical. Yeah. And it crosses Earth's path, an entry and exit, with... In modern day, it would be about 150 and 152 and 18 day separation. And 
I just find it extremely interesting that this March event that's marked in the calendar matches the data of the Asians. This would be around the time frame that the Asians are pointing at. Okay. So March, uh, March. So we have, March? we have multiple lineups here with the text. Yeah, so March 15th, 16th might be a very, very uh, prophetic time. It could very well be when these very, the very sign wonder in the heavens seen by John, we may actually get to see that in March 15th or 16th. And so I think that's quite fascinating. We're going to be, you know, we're going to be looking up into the constellations, looking up into the sky, see what this is. And uh, see if we see that. And I think, you know, again, uh, this is fascinating information, Gil. It really, really is. And I, and I appreciate the humbleness that Gil Brazard brings to this. He brings a very humbleness. Very few people are willing to just go out and say, look, look, this is something that's going to happen in the heavens. There's a lot of other pieces and parts moving here uh, on the earth, some current world events. But certainly a lot of these events that have happened uh, are, are quite extraordinary what's going on with world powers, wars, rumors of wars, the rise of radical Islam, the election just held in America, the effect of it across the globe with democracies, how close we were to the beast. I mean, Gil, I mean, seriously, I, I'm telling you, we're still close, but I'm just saying uh, the, the, the New World Order was just like on the doorstep, on the threshold here. And I'm not saying it's been pushed back a gazillion years, but there, it, it's, it's all in prophecy. It's just the timing is all working out. Uh, let me ask you a question here. As, uh, the, uh, when we look at the asteroids, the warped, you're saying the asteroids are being warped. And that's why we're seeing more and more asteroids, meteors, fireballs. But what about the pressure from the waves of energy? The pressure uh, affecting earthquakes and volcanoes. Uh, what is your take on that? Well, it's, it's it's a similar pressure, just like the sun when it uh, when it uh, pulsates plasma out, and it affects us. These waves would have the same effect. Okay, right? uh, because they're plasma, uh, so it moves our it it starts to collapse our mag magnetic field uh, and our magnetic field has a, just like a motor it creates torque in the inner part of our uh, core that causes us to spin so anything that goes against our magnetic field will cause uh, torquing issues that might cause earthquakes um, does CERN play any role in this? Does CERN got any effect with anything that's going, especially with the magnetosphere? I have no idea. Uh, I'm not really too concerned about CERN at all. Uh, it's in its own little realm. I think that they created CERN to look for a new uh, a new particle that they could make a weapon to help destroy incoming meteors. Uh, because a nuclear weapon, if you have large meteors, a nuclear weapon is not strong enough. Wow. It doesn't have, so they would need something that it would have capabilities of something in the magnitudes of thousands of times uh, larger than what a, uh, a nuclear or nuclear weapon could do today. You know, Anthony Patch, uh, yeah, Anthony that's Patch. That's what I think they were doing. Yeah, Anthony Patch uh, said that that is definitely part of it, to create a weapon that's even greater than uh, the nuclear power. Now you do, and I know you know this, but the uh, the, the White House under o President Obama last January opened what they call the Armageddon office. And then in the fall of this past year, uh, an executive order was made by President Obama. And that executive order was, was to prepare in case of a space weather event that the President of the United States would have full authority and power to confiscate food, water, 
shelter, bunkers, anything and everything they would need through FEMA and Department of Homeland Security. This was this this was a very broad brush executive order, and he starts talking about spa, a space weather event. So do you think? And then I've heard Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin said we should be turning our nukes and rockets and and weapons toward the heavens to shoot down incoming asteroids. So do, are we going to see an increase? in asteroid activity, and are we going to see a deep impact? We've already seen a large large in, uh, increase in asteroids coming in. Um, we, will that trend continue? That just depends if there's asteroids in the area that would fulfill that. Uh, there's a high probability because the orbits are warped. What the, used to miss Earth is now crossing Earth's path. And if Earth is in that area when it's crossing, then yes, we're going to have some. Could they be large? Yes. Some of them are very large. Whether or not they were hit us, uh, I can't give any conclusive. Yeah, and, and isn't, it, that, isn't but, it true uh, that, isn't it kind of true that NASA seems to they, they have predicted successfully every meteor that has missed us. But they have not ever told us of a meteor that is going to hit us. And, and can, remember, can you help me understand that? Remember when they, uh, that meteor that hit us that went over Russia? Yes. And they said, oh, it came from the backside of the sun. That's why we couldn't see it. And the public bought that. Well, that's, that's hogwash. <laughs> Yeah. Because uh, remember, Earth is spinning around the, uh, the sun. Earth is rotating around the sun. Okay, so three months earlier, even we could have seen its orbital path. Remember, a uh, a meteor has a elliptical orbit, so it it doesn't stay stationary behind the sun, like some people say about Planet X. Oh, it's behind it. It's only behind the sun for what, like a week or so. Or, uh, at the most, uh, all right. Yeah. Otherwise, you're gonna see it. It's either to the right or to the left, unless it's being cloaked, which I strongly believe that that's what that's what our lasers and our space pro uh, space program that Reagan put up there is used for cloaking this. So, yeah. and and the Bible lose if Jonah's forty day warning is for us. That means we shouldn't see it before that. It, uh, possibly we might see it for the 40 day if it's if it if it parallels Antarctica Antarctica Gil because we're gonna run out of time Antarctica we got world leaders going to Antarctica to see something that's very hush hush they don't talk about what they're going down there for uh, I have Steve Quayle as my guest tomorrow who is I'm gonna ask him Steve why in the world are they going to Antarctica could Antarctica, as my question to you would be, could Antarctica be an advantage point if you had a high-powered telescope in Antarctica? Is that where, are they going down there to take a peek at Planet X is my question. Is, is there a better uh, advantage point uh, if being in the South Pole to maybe spot Planet X? If money is not an object, then yes, it is the best vantage point because Earth is tilted, okay? Okay, okay. And the South Pole region tilts towards the south of the universe. Remember, polar south looking straight down is not south of the universe. That's called nadar. Polar south, I mean, uh, universal south is pointing towards Sagittarius. Well, you have more nighttime skies, uh, uh, hours on the south side of the uh, poles looking towards the south of the universe. So that would be the ideal vantage point to get the maximum uh, time to look at. And it's also a good place to isolate information because it can't leave there unless you go through it's through one person at the communication uh, right. bay to be, able to, to be able to, in other words, it's very easily censored. So, I mean, you have to understand, and so this is a great, this is a tremendous answer, 
because I read another article where a man, and I was reading a scientist from the year, I can't remember, seemed like it was the year 2004, who said if a person was in an airplane, 35, 36,000 feet in the air, and was flying over South America and had a high-powered telescope and the sky was beautifully clear, he might be able to get a peek at planet X, okay? So I thought to myself, wow. And, that was he, and he said this in 2004. And now I'm thinking, wow. So here we are. It's 2017. We got world leaders going to Antarctica, which is a better location than South America, you know, uh, in an airplane, a stationary base. We know that we know the Nazis built a a military base in South in, in Antarctica. And, and in 1947, the United States, this is documented. This has been these are from uh, once what weren't once were classified documents have been released. 1947, we sent an aircraft carrier down there. We sent destroyers down there to go and try to blow up this Nazi base. And that was 1947. So there's no doubt in my mind there is locations down there and probably a high-powered observatory that has the perfect angle at planet X. And it might be very possible, and you've answered it, that reason world leaders are slipping off in the middle of the night and going to Antarctica is maybe they're going down there to get a peek at Planet X. Uh, it is a possibility. Uh, put it this way, we have enough uh, points of, of reference that we're seeing today. Like the, remember our Bible says that earthquakes would climb, climb so high that it would, it would mimic the... Uh, pains of a woman giving giving birth where it where it goes into like an ex exponential growth right uh, we're seeing that yeah we we're, are uh, it's quite quite clear uh, uh, we're seeing birds die fish uh, fish die at, at extraordinary rates yes we are uh, our magnetic north is moving at 12 times as normal what affects a magnetic field except another magnetic field? Okay, That's this true. planet is affecting our magnetic north. It's even changing our tilt of Earth by four degrees. Okay, That's huge. this is scientific data I'm quoting. I know this it is. It's not hearsay. All right? Right. Uh, we have something that is affecting us, the orbits of comets, the orbits of asteroids, our sun, and our planets. And it's inside our solar system. But yet, there is no sighting that's valid right now uh, for, because the object is cloaked. We have the ability through lasers in space to cloak an object. I show a short video of that on my I know. Planet 7X on a YouTube on how that is possible. Yeah, you're and saying to, to, to create a cloak, to create a, a, a mirage, to, uh, to, to hide things that could be seen otherwise using a deceptive technology, which we do have. The military's had it for quite some time where they could literally have an army in a, in a field and they could hide them and the people could sit there and look right at it and don't see them. That technology right. does exist, and you do a great job showing that in one of your YouTube videos. Folks, check out his uh, website at planet7x.net. That's planet7x.net. Also, you go to Gil Brazard's Facebook page, check YouTube. Also, YouTube. Planet he's got a, He's yeah. So all of these things are available. Gil, I'm going to have to ask you. You got to come back, right before March 15th or 16th, or on March 15th or something, to give us some kind of idea of what we might be getting ready to see. Uh, I'd like to put that invitation out there to you. Okay, that'd be great. You can. Can kind of, um, I uh, might be in uh, Jerusalem. <laughs> but, That's a, uh, <laughs> well, if you are, we will con we'll still get you on through Skype. Okay, I'll have Heidi arrange that. So yes, we would love to get a. Uh, you might have a front row seat on this, and so we'd like to find out what it is. Uh, is the wonder that's in heaven uh, that was 
spoken of by John the Revelator as he received this, the revelation in uh, Revelation chapter 12. Uh, you know, wow. I mean, this is exciting times. There's no question about it. And Gil, I want to thank you for coming on and being our guest today. I mean, this was really informative. And again, folks, Gil Brazard is the leading expert when it comes to Planet X and how it ties biblically and historically um, to the events that have been taking place on the earth. Gil, I appreciate it very much. Well, thank you, Paul, and, and uh, thank you, wife Heidi, for the, for the emails. And uh, it's a pleasure. I'll see you later.